Hey guys, welcome to the episode 4 of the New Life Vision series. Uh, this episode is about collective curatorial creativity. And the whole concept is about how creativity is actually not something that you do in silos, isolated, but is actually part of a whole that's much bigger than you. And understanding that is going to be a great tool or a great way for you to approach uh, the creative space. Uh, we have been lied to and I'm going to tell you everything uh, about that specific topic. So let's start. I love to draw, so I'm going to make a little drawing here. So basically when you are a creator, an artist, a musician, whatever you do, um, you kind of think that you have to be this like unique person or unique creative output that kind of forgets about the world around them and tries to create something that's so unique and so special that people are going to like it and they are going to give you love and they are going to appreciate you as an artist and that's basically it and so a lot of artists I see are getting disappointed artists, designers and so on because most of the time either they are actually not living in this actual paradigm meaning that they are doing things intuitively and, and connecting it with a wider um, range of references that they don't know about or they are really trying to get aware of them and to be like really pure, raw, unique and doing what's coming just from them and they get disappointed and the main reason for that is that when you create for yourself it's one thing obviously if you want to, to, to do a, a song that only you is gonna like it's, uh, it's completely fine. But when you interact with other people, when you want to interact and engage an audience, uh, people who will consume or who will enjoy your, uh, your art piece, you kind of have to share the same language. So if I come to you and I start saying Ran kan tan ko bad dang gan dang go, you might not have fun because you don't understand what I'm saying. So I'm using words that are not mine. I'm using them. The English English language has invented, been invented by someone else, uh, by probably a collective of, of people. And I'm using them. That's my constraints here. I'm using words. I'm wearing clothes that are not mine. I'm using lights that is not mine. And the camera is not mine. And all those things have been borrowed. But by combining all those ingredients together, I'm creating a piece that's really unique. And it has impact and it is interesting because I'm using words that you understand because I'm using tools that enable me to connect to YouTube and to whatever platform that you are watching this on. And all of this is being made possible because it's interconnected. Like the, the, the output of this video is interconnected with a lot of things that already existed. And because of that, it's much easier to connect. So if you look at this, if you look at this this way, actually your name is borrowed, your language is borrowed, your world are borrowed. But even if you look at any you know form of art, let's say you are going to be um, again to take the example of music, uh, you are taking a guitar and you are playing the guitar. Well, you might create something very unique, but the notes and the instrument itself and the genre of music has been borrowed and it's all fine. That's part of what I call the constraints. So I will do another drawing where basically you have the constraints. So let's say this is the place where you can create because you are playing an instrument or you are using a medium or you are using a format that has this shape. And what you can do within this format is create things that are yours. So it might be different from the other person using the same constraints, but within those constraints, that's what you came up with. And it can be very fun to play with constraints. Actually, the more constraints you add, the more creative you have to become. So I'm always, for example, fascinated by 3D designers who just start from a completely blank page 
and who start to design a shape out of nowhere because it's like the, 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 the white page anxiety multiplied by the three uh, aspect of it. So you have to basically sculpt the shape out of, out of nothing. And this is extremely uh, free and great, but it's, it's also very uh, stressful. And even 3D softwares have their own tools to project lights on it and all those things that are produced by the software uh, inventors. So now we are looking at uh, constraints as one thing that all those things have in common. So if you are watching, let's say, a TV show, uh, I don't know, uh, Friends or Westworld, let's say, which I really like, each episode of Westworld has a set of constraints. Some things can change and some things cannot change. So the whole cast cannot change. It could maybe, but not every episode. Uh, it, um, the, the, the kind of concept of the show cannot change. Uh, the music or you know, the, the intro sound, the intro music is, is the same. The narrative, the, the, the episode, the consistency of the episodes, all of that is part of the set of constraints. But then each episode in itself is innovative. And so if you are trying to create something that has no constraints and that is always unique and completely unique you might end up in a situation where the audience in front of you will have nothing to 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 rely on and so the reason why culture and culture exists and the reason why creativity is interconnected with culture is that a culture kind of sets some characteristics of your output that will be already mastered or already understood by the receiver and some of it which will be your creativity. And the more you can stretch both, the more you can, as you can have familiarity and creativity within, within this familiarity, the more powerful it gets. It's a bit like a conversation. If you can predict exactly what the person is going to say, the conversation is extremely boring. If you can not at all predict and it's just some random words, it's too crazy and it's like some gibberish that you cannot really enjoy either. What you want to have in a conversation with someone is some sentences that have meaning but that tell you something new that you never heard before. And now we are touching a topic that I find fascinating which is the concept of flow. So. If something is too demanding for your brain, demanding, it becomes stressful. If you have to really, really think hard to understand something, if you really need to be concentrated or if you need to accept some very hard conditions, it's too stressful. And if something is uh, too comfortable, let's say, comfortable, predictable, kind of reliable, but too much, it becomes boring. And so the flow channel is this magic sweet spot where everyone is trying to stay in, which is that what you are experiencing is new, but not so new. You kind of have a sense of what it is and you kind of have a sense of surprise. So it's kind of the same with any relationship, it's the same with life in general. You don't want your life to be, okay, today I'm living in this country and then 10 minutes later I take a plane and I never know what's going to happen next. And if you, go, if you do that for years, you would go crazy. Uh, or it could become your new familiarity. Uh, and then that, that's also an interesting way to look at it. But some kind of pattern makes you feel safer, more comfortable. Habits are very good. And then within those habits, you can bring some like excitement, some new uh, things that will get funnier. And so if we talk about the creative, uh, collective curated creativity, we need to talk about curation and how curation is actually a form of creativity. So, if you are a music producer, let's say, you need to, to compose a song, 
this song has constraints so you have a certain amount of bars where the sound can change you have a certain amount of features that your software allows you and then you have an infinity of little samples of sound that you can use and so then you are gonna play your melody so you are gonna play your melody and then you will uh, pass it through different so your melody let's say is what is unique even though it's um, very unlikely and the fact of doing a melody itself is not unique so you are gonna do this melody and then you are gonna try different sounds on this melody so we'll put like some very electric sound some very low high uh, distorted you will try a lot of things and you will listen to them and you will be like this is okay this is uh, maybe this oh this sounds great oh wow this is awesome and by flowing like that with the different sounds you will pick the one that you like and then boom your uh, your f the first part of your track is ready and so this process of curation happens at an other level where you have all those different sounds and then you have to decide how to organize them at what point to start them at what point to and then you have filters and you look at filters and you are choosing filters you didn't create those filters you can accurate them and then it goes on and on because then you like edit your track you master it it's ready it goes to soundcloud and then someone on soundcloud makes a playlist with it so they curate it and then a dj is like surfing and finding this playlist and then wants to play it in their club so the dj will curate this sound and then the club owner will, will book or the party promoter will book this dj so the party promoter is curating djs and then the club owner will curate party promoters and then the party promoters uh, the club owners will be curated by the final uh, people who come to the club and so all this chain of curation from the person who did this sound the sound engineer who did the first sound to all the way to the person who's going to dance it's actually not completely vertical like this there are lots of interactions so the dj will for example adapt to the audience and how they respond there will be some kind of back and forth between the two and this whole thing is creativity and culture it's cultural cultural curatorial um, uh, collective curatorial creativity and so when you look at things this way um, you realize that something very interesting happens in contemporary uh, culture which is that people have this constraint which is for example the meme so the meme is like uh, I don't know uh, take any uh, contemporary me meme and the image is the same but the text is different and everyone comes and do their own version of the text take for example TikTok it's an entertainment uh, angle it's a social app that is based on uh, humor entertainment and they have an audio file and then each uh, visual is different um, take now trap, trap music, so you have the 808, you have the snare, all those things are very com very like similar between all the songs, but then you have different, and even the flow, like the triplet and all those aspects of the song, they are uh, similar but different. And we are entering an age where all the forms of creativity are operating as clusters, where the part that's unique is tiny but it's very unique and then you have a lot of overlap between the different uh, contents and this new form of like dynamic overlap collective creativity horizontal there is no this like one big star that tells you okay I'm the Michael Jackson and I'm gonna rule music or I'm uh, this uh, big rapper that's like trusting the whole industry it's like everyone is taking a little piece of the pie everyone is contributing somehow to this collective consciousness the same happens with uh, trends in fashion in arts you have a lot of movements that have a lot in common and this creates uh, constraints within the content itself so the, the constraint that used to be a container thing is becoming a content thing and uh, um, the big challenge with this is how do we allocate the attribution to the people who produce the final piece and the final piece I'm talking about is an entire collection of 20,000 pictures because this is, this is art 
you create a mood board, you are creating art. I've seen a lot of very cool post-internet artists creating a Tumblr page and calling it an art piece. And I agree, it's valid. Uh, curation, creativity, collective curation, collective effort is a form of art and uh, or is a form of creativity. And so with New Life, our, um, one of the main challenges is to be able to place value where it belongs and to be as fair as possible and to encourage and to foster attribution between all those creators in order to create those very distributed forms of creativity and very collaborative. Uh, we talk a lot about co-creation and the challenge here is to map intellectual property no longer as I'm this like one rock star, this idol that's going to make all this value and everyone will be like a follower and a, um, a fan of, of me, uh, but rather a fellow co-creator. And maybe creators will uh, ask people who like them to contribute and to participate and to uh, add the final touch to their art piece. Or maybe there won't be any idol anymore. Uh, what is for sure is that we are moving towards horizontality. We discussed about postmodernity in the first episode uh, and the technology that is emerging with new life will enable that. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, the uh, two last episodes will be around um, three actually, sorry. Uh, the ecosystem. So we'll talk about the new life ecosystem and how it actually works compared to the uh, classic uh, forms of cultural infrastructures. Then we'll talk about uh, creative coordination. So now that we talked about that, we will see how we can coordinate together and how we can produce uh, amazing out outputs um, as a collective community of creators. And eventually the uh, roadmap and how we are going to deliver on the vision, where we are at, where we are going. So once again, it was a pleasure to have you here. Uh, have a lovely day and speak soon.